that's great. How do we visually represent this? You know, what's the, the point of the observer pattern is really enablement for others to be aware. A lot of times in our observers for us GUI developers are utilized to visually show something changing. So let's make a health bar. First, make a health bar class, health bar. It's a bar, it's got some health. You all know the song, copy, paste, coding. For now, health bar doesn't actually utilize any classes. I'll get to the constructor values in just a minute. Let's get rid of all this insanity. And call it health bar. So a health bar has to do two things. Now, most video games have a health bar represented by green to indicate how much health you have as a progress bar, and red on that progress bar to indicate how you have some form of damage. More red, more bad, right? Blood, bad, right? Green, health, good. So we need two things. Number one, we need a canvas to draw in, right? We're not going to use DOM for this. We're just going to use a simple canvas. Number two, we need hit points, a hit points instance. We need to listen for those particular hit points to know when they've changed, right? So when they change, we know to redraw. There are two times when you redraw something that's dealing with an observer. First, when the clash initially has come about, you want to draw something by default. Let's assume it's a health bar, doesn't have any hit points, then it's going to draw that. Or it's going to draw the initial value of the hit points, in this case, because they're coming in inside the constructor. So let's first set them. So this is my canvas, this is my hit points. Now, initially I want to set my callback to this, this dot on hit points changed. Let's go implement that. Health bar, prototype, on hit points changed. Wonderful, we now have our thing. Now when hit points change, we need to redraw, or redraw ourselves. But we also need to redraw when we were first born, right? So we call the same actual redraw function. Again, dry is in full effect. Don't repeat yourself. The actual ability to visually represent health or damage, however you want to look at it, is in the redraw function. So first, let's get our context. Our context is our actual two-dimension, two-dimensional surface in which we're going to draw. In this case, bitmap. We're just going to do a bunch of pixels. Number two, we're going to clear it. So every time we redraw, we want to redraw the entire canvas, which in this case is canvas width, canvas height. Let's turn the entire thing basically to white. That's really what it means. Now, we need to draw some green to default. So let's draw some green real quick. Let's just make sure that this guy works. So we'll go fill rect. We'll make it uh, 100 pixels by 32. Sounds good. Sounds big enough. And let's test our health bar out. Make sure he works. Health bar. Sounds like something you eat. Or someplace you go to chill with vegans. Our canvas. Health bar. I'm not saying all vegans are healthy. They better be taking their supplements. All right. So we have our health bar. Let's get our canvas real quick. How do we have a canvas? Let's make one. Canvas. My canvas. Width is 720. Gigantor. Big, huge. You work on commission? Huge mistake. Big, huge. I know I'm a guy and I quoted Pretty Woman. What's up with that? You're not Metro. You can't sing. Crazy. I'm crazy for feeling so lonely in my closet coding on YouTube. I'm crazy for using a dynamically typed language when there are to <clears throat> Stop right there. <laughs> All right. So we have health bar. We have it our canvas. How do we get our canvas? Let's talk about that. Our canvas is, we don't have jQuery, so we're going to go old school. Yo, document. Somewhere in here, I need you to get me this uh, Dom element. Uh, his name is my canvas. If you could just dig around in your XML and find them for me, that'd be great. Okay. Hey, he's right there. Cool. Pass it in. Lastly, just make sure that we actually update the actual class that comes into play, and we are too legit to quit. Let's refresh and test this guy out. Cool. So we have this black box. Fantastic. So we now have a black box. Let's make it green. So we'll say context fill style. We're going to do RGB. Zero means nothing or black or zero. 
F means everything. No, we need two Fs for green, bro. Refresh the page. Cool. We now have a green health bar. We're full health. The way you draw health is to identify where it's at versus what it could be at or its potential. In this case, value versus max value, right? So our model is going to handle managing those two variables internally, right? Our health points, hit points class. Our view class is going to look at that and calculate percentages to do drawing. So again, you can see encapsulation at work. The observer pattern is represented by the hit points. He handles managing all the internal logic and says, look, the hit points change, just want to let you know. I'll handle how they change internally. The view, in this case, the health bar, is responsible for drawing the hit points. So he needs to know when they change. When they change, he can actually dig in there and go, okay, the value is this and this. But he doesn't actually set them unless he calls apply damage, okay? So our view needs to know what a percentage is. So to make percentages easy, I like to use constants. So we'll say bar health. It's all caps with underscores. Right? That's the way of const. Newer browsers can do this, but not everybody. So we'll just use the bar and follow the convention of all uppercase underscore. Say the bar width, not health, bar width is 100. And replace the magic numbers with good old constants, all right? 100 corresponds wonderfully to percentages, so we'll use 100. So let's calculate the percentage. Health percentage is this that hit points value divided by this that hit points max value. Now, if it was 10 and 10, 10 divided by 10 is 1. Cool, 100%. Right? As a percentage, 1 means 100%. As a percentage, 0 means 0%, right? 50 represents 0 0.5 or half, right? Or 50%. So our percentage will handle that. The value is going to be divided by whatever the max potential value is. This will give us a float or percentage. Utilizing that, we can get how big we're supposed to be based on our max width. So 1 and 1 would be 100, right? If we got 50%, it would be 50 pixels or drawn by half or 80%, right? Whatever that percentage is. So we're going to get our width to draw is our bar width, which is how much potential room we have to draw, multiplied by the percentage. If we have full health, it'll be 100%, and this percentage will actually be 1. So 100 times 1 will be 1. However, any less than that, the green is going to go down, okay? So by default, our width to draw is going to be what? It's going to be by default 100 because we started with full hit points. We had an applied damage. As you can see, the green health bar is still exactly where our pixels were before. So what happens when we change health? Initially, at initial conditions, let's say our hit points initially are 5 and 10, right? It should be half. So let's refresh the page. Yep, you can see my cursor's right here. Do half. Okay, that's cool, and that's the observer pattern, but the point of the observer is as the application's going, others who are aware and responsible for representing that data visually can know about it, and they can via the callback. You ready? Hit points, apply damage. Let's apply damage five. So he takes half hit points gone. Boom. As you can see, it redrawed. The callback fired. The health bar registered for that callback internally inside his class. It called his on hit points change. He redrew. He refreshed the entire canvas, recalculated the percentage, and redrew it, right? Let's say we had a new function called heal. So we're going to go to our hit points and say hit points prototype heal by how much? This dot value plus by how much? If this dot value is greater than this dot max value, then set this dot value equal to the max value. We can't go over our max amount of hit points. Now that, that business logic is done, we are ready to tell the world that we have in fact changed, right? Controlling our inputs, that way the world can be made aware of things are changing, right? Having controlled inputs. If people started accessing value, we'd have no idea. We wouldn't have these wonderful checks in place. Be all gone, you know what I'm saying? Observer pattern, powerful stuff. Simple, most powerful design pattern you'll ever learn how the world works on software. So let's refresh the page. Move back to full length, apply damage five. Cool. Let's go heal by five. Oh yeah. Let's go hit points apply damage five. Then we'll go heal one. Uh, 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 uh. Cool stuff, right? Observer pattern in action. Now you can get a little bit more funky if you want. You can actually calculate the hurt to draw, right? Which is the bar width minus how much you've actually calculated for your width. So if you're gonna draw 80%, that means you have 20 left, 
So we're gonna do all the hurt to draw. In this case, we'll do this after drawing the good stuff. And we'll say context fill style is red. Then you can say fill rect is the hurt to draw. That's the current uh, location, right, of the X position of where you're actually drawing from the right, which in this case is width to draw. Y is zero, obviously you start at the top. The width is hurt to draw, that's how much width you're drawing. And then still 32 for the height, we're always 32 for the height. So when you refresh the page, you're not gonna see any red until you apply some damage, right? Let's say, let's apply some more damage. So you can constantly go down. Now it's looking more like a health bar. Let's start healing ourselves. Get one. Pretty cool. So that is the observer pattern in action. You, now when you look at any computer program or any piece of software or any game, you're going to see that when that data changes and that text field updates, you know how it's working. It's the observer pattern in action. Somebody somewhere setting that hit points or damage or something, it's setting a change event via a callback or a message or an event. And it's propagating up to the view class to go, oh, it must have changed. I got to update myself. That is your first design pattern using your OOP knowledge to utilize design patterns that help solve common engineering problems.